Some of my viewers have suggested that I go take a civil service exam as a way to finally end my long-term unemployment and finally find a full-time job. And what many of my viewers don't know is that I have taken civil service exams in the past and my experience with the civil service system is one that is extremely negative. Now I had a family member back in 2006 tell me all about a civil service position that was available through the City University of New York. And this position, which was called the CUNY Office Assistant, would be an easy job. They told me that the civil service exam was easy and that if I got the job and I made probation in one year, I could make the permanency and I could never be fired. Now, I went for this job because I really needed a job at the time and I wanted to get back on my feet because I was living off of $60 a month a family member was giving me. And in order to take this exam, which cost $30, I made an extreme sacrifice. So instead of spending money on food for that month, I took half the money I had for that month and I paid for that exam. So for that month, I was living off of $30 a month in order to pay for this exam. And I went and I went down to Washington Irving High School to take the exam. And after I took the exam, I went out and I waited for the scores to come back. And sadly, I got a 60 on the first exam I took. And I really wanted this job because I wanted a job to get back on my feet. So I decided to take the exam again. And this time, as I was getting ready to take this exam, I disregarded my family member's advice about how this exam was so easy and anyone could pass it, because after taking the exam and seeing how they worded the questions and seeing some of the things they put on the exam, I started to see some of the tricks that people used on these exams to try to, quote unquote, weed people out. Now, when it comes down to this exam, I wrote a whole blog on how to pass this exam because I had studied for it. And what you need to study for this exam is you would need to study fractions, you would need to study decimals, you would need to study grammar and sentence structure. And I went about this and I got out all my co old college books out from under my bed and I started studying extensively for this exam. And in April of 2007, I went to take this exam again. And as I took this exam again, I was able to handle it a little better. And then around October of 2007, I finally passed the exam with an 80. And I thought that after I passed this exam, I would finally be on my way to finding that full-time job that would finally allow me to get back on my feet. I was 34 years old at the time, and I had felt like I had lost a lot of time due to the depression I had from 2002 when I had gotten fired from a law firm job that just didn't work out as a receptionist. And I was finally looking forward to finally getting back on my feet and finally starting my life because that's what this job had meant to me when I had got it. I felt like I would be able to finally get back on my feet. But to my surprise, when I entered the hiring pool in December of 2007, that's when I found out that human resources at civil service is not about merit. No, when it comes down to human resources and civil service, it's a fiefdom and it's all about being under the control of the sphere of females and manginas. That's who primarily controls hiring in CUNY civil service system. And because females and manginas control the hiring there, there is a on-group preference primarily for females. And that's something I saw when I entered the hiring pool back in December of 2007 because a majority of the people who took the exam were women and I was one of like maybe three black men in the room there was one Hispanic male and at the end of the day most of the males were told their names would be put back on the list and I had a little connection with some of the people at City College of New York at the time and even though I got turned down by everyone there, they, they told me they might consider me if I sent them a writing sample. Now, my computer, my laptop, had broke way back in April, and I had to use a family member's computer, and I sent them an email with a writing sample of my book at the time, the Cassandra Cook book, but unfortunately, 
they never got back to me. Now, I ran into those same people again when I went to another hiring pool back in, what was it, January of 2008 or February of 2008, and I brought them a printed copy of a sample from my Cassandra cookbook, and I talked about my passion for books, and they offered me a position with their City College Science Library. Now, I, when I got this job, I thought I was finally going to, again, start my life. But after I came out of the hiring pool, I came home and told everybody I got this job, I get a call the next day telling me that my start position time would not be February of 2008, as I discussed with the HR people there, but the start position was changed to April of 2008. Now, that was a red flag to me, but I still wanted to persevere because I had a set of goals that I wanted to pursue after I got this job because my ultimate goal was to start publishing many of the books that I had made into manuscripts over the last couple of years. And the three books that I had made into manuscripts at the time was the Cassandra Cookbook, the book that I had been shopping around with publishers and literary agents for about two years because I had finished it in 2004 and I started shopping it around with publishers and literary agents and I was starting to get some bites and I thought I was going to be able to do something with it but many of the publishers and literary agents they really did not like the idea of a homosexual male being played as the bad guy I didn't know that until my best-selling author friend told me this a couple of years later that when it comes down to publishing white women they usually want to see the gay male character presented as the best friend they don't like seeing the gay male character as the bad guy and that was a book that I thought was going to break, but it didn't break. I also had The Temptation of John Haynes, a book that got over 500, 600 rejections. Everyone in the publishing world hated this book, but readers like this book now that it's been published. And I had the screenplay for All About Maryland. All three of those at the time, they were sitting in boxes in manuscript form, and I had finally managed to print out the manuscripts for Temptation of John Haynes and All About Maryland and it, because my computer was about to die and the motherboard was about to give out but I finally managed to print out a final copy before that computer died and that thank God I was able to do that because that was the only way I had them along with the paper files um, no no the disk files on diskette at the time I had a, I had a family member put them on a USB key for me because I didn't even have a disk to put them on at the time. But that was the only way those files survived. And I was looking to start getting those manuscripts published and that was my primary goal after I got that job. Now, I finally got the job at City College of New York's Science Library and I started in April of 2008. And I ran into, again, more obstacles because when you have a fiefdom, you really don't have any rules and you don't have any structure. Now, the dean told me, on the, told me in the office that the professor was supposed to be my supervisor at, in the science library. However, when I went to the science library, he decides to delegate my supervision to the pro-black female who was supposed to be my co-worker. And what I found later on, as I was watching Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares and Hotel Hell, is that this is a practice that many manginas participate in because they don't want to deal with conflict, and if they don't like someone, they don't want to be responsible for them. So they'll pass the responsibility of supervising someone to someone else. And this is what I ran into when I first went to the City College of New York to work in their library, in that I didn't know who the supervisor was, I didn't know who was in charge, and this again is a passive-aggressive tactic that many manginas use and that many females capitalize on because when it comes down to females, they like having power and they like having control over a situation. And at the time, I just wasn't really thinking about these hierarchies or these fiefdoms. I was just glad to work and I was glad to finally start getting work and start working on my goals because I set a goal for myself at the time to get the Cassandra Cookbook published within 90 days and that was the, one of the goals I had set for myself 
when I worked at this job. I said I wanted to get this book published and my family member was getting ready to buy another computer so I took her old computer and I began editing that script at nights as I was working on working at this job. Now in the first couple of days when I was on this job I had con contracted what they call the CUNY flu because what many people don't know is that these CUNY buildings for some reason they are filled with germs and I contracted this flu and I had gotten sick and on the second day I was go I went to work with a flu. I went there trying to you know try to make this good impression on people and show people that I was dedicated and I had this bad flu but I was in the, in, it was towards the middle of the day I was about I was feeling like I was about to pass out and I took a moment to sit down and I what I didn't know was that the head of the department had come in and this man Gina, he was upset about it so he sends his black female to come and talk to me about the situation because he thought I was sleeping on the job. What he didn't know was that I had a flu and I was just trying to stay functional so I could get through the day. And what he was mad, he was all mad at me and I didn't know he was mad at me because when it comes down to manginas, they want to avoid conflict, they don't want to solve problems, and they sit there and they want to impress people not understanding that the impression you leave on people by avoiding conflict is showing that you're not capable of being a leader. So for all your sucking up and brown nosing, you're not showing anyone why they need to take you seriously because you are too afraid to deal with conflict. Now I'm trying to deal with this flu and I'm trying to deal with her and I come back the third day because I'm like, I'm going to try to make this job work. So I was going to go to work sick and I went to work sick for that entire week buying Theraflu from the bodega just to try to keep this job because that's how much this job meant to me that I was willing to make sacrifices to keep this job and try to make this thing work out and I really pushed to make this job work out but I ran into a lot of obstacles on this job that were really hard to overcome and some of them related to the way a lot of these people in civil service operate now when it comes down to a lot of people in civil service they are extremely passive-aggressive and they are extremely manipulative and this was something I found out early on as the semester started to change and they started to lose funding to pay for the students who work there now when it comes down to CUNY they have a budget to pay the student salaries for the college assistant jobs and because they have a budget for it they usually wind up running out of money towards the end of the semester or towards the beginning of the semester and in order to keep the services running they often back then used to have the office assistants work overtime and this would be unpaid overtime so in, in when you worked extra hours you wouldn't get paid for those extra hours and they would give you quote-unquote comp time but a lot of times you wouldn't be able to take the comp time due to the extensive nature of the schedule and at the science library the library would be open from nine o'clock to uh, eleven o'clock so I was told that you know by this woman she couldn't work all those hours because of this budget issue and I'm sitting there and the way she worded it sounded like she was trying to manipulate me and I told her I really couldn't work all those hours because I thought she was trying to manipulate me and she got upset about it and then she wound up working a different schedule because I just worked the schedule I was supposed to work 8.30 to 4.30 and then she worked from about 12 to 11. But when I look at that whole system, that whole thing, it looked like she was trying to manipulate me and that's all part of the passive aggressive nature of these civil service jobs because a lot of people in civil service, they're really manipulative, they're really passive aggressive. And another incident I had early on related to the opening of the library. Now, I used to open the library, so I would come in first at 8.30, and I would open it at 9 o'clock on the dot. And I come in one day, and she's telling me that they need to open the library at 8.55. And I'm sitting there going, but the hours say 9 o'clock. And then she gets all snappy with me, and I'm sitting there what, going, what's wrong here? And then I start to see it later on when this mangina professor, this Jewish guy, comes to me, with his outdated cell phone telling me that the library is supposed to open by the time on his clock and I'm sitting there going 
your clock is wrong. And that was a red flag to me. And it showed me something that I didn't see until many years later when David Carroll talked about it as related to how these black women deify and worship white men. Now, when it comes down to these black women in these civil service jobs, they deify and worship white men. And they'll do anything that they say, no matter how illogical it is, and they'll go along with anything these white men say, no matter how illogical it is. Now, I was working at this job for a couple of months. I was trying, starting to save some money. And after I published Cassandra Cookbook with my old print-on-demand publisher, I decided to start trying to raise the funds to buy a new computer because the f computer my family member was giving me was having problems. And I decided I was going to start saving the money to buy the first computer I had back in 2008, um, the Dell Latitude that I had where I started the SJS Direct imprint. Now, I thought I was going to be able to get through this, and I thought things were going okay until 9-11 of 2008 when I'm going, this guy, he's just really scared of me, and he decides he wants to have a performance appraisal. And he had delayed the first one, because it was supposed to be every three months, but what this guy did that was really sneaky with it was he waited until 9-11 to give me a performance appraisal, which was the first one. And in the first one, he's talking to me about stuff, and he, and he brings up the statement that he's looking for someone with a sales and a customer service background. And that was another red flag to me, that said that this guy really did not want me in the position because if you have someone on the job and they're doing the job, you, you don't really want to change them because this guy already knew that I was a writer. He had known that I had published ISIS and he knew about my previous experience with Americor. So he knew that I had a background in what I had, but he's going to sit there and tell me during the performance appraisal that he wants someone with a sales and a customer service background. And I tried to stay a consummate professional, but then here came the passive aggressiveness yet again. And they started ratcheting up the work, and they wanted me to put barcodes in the shelves of books that didn't have barcodes. Because I noticed that when somebody first came there, when the first month that I came there, they were having problems with books with no barcodes. And I told them that, look, I would help them do that, and that would be something I wanted to do. But they decided to get passive aggressive, and they had me do entire shelves. And what I didn't know is they had five whole sections that had no barcodes from G to QC in that whole college library. And they wanted me to do this. And again, this was passive aggressive. And it was just something that people do in civil service. And they do that because they really, if they don't like someone, they try to do things to try to force someone out. Because that's how passive aggressive people are. And I was still trying to persevere with this and still trying to do this work and still trying to serve customers at the same time. And one day we had a little slow morning and I'm looking down at the, at the counter for a second and all of a sudden I get this accusation telling me that I'm sleeping on the job and this black female decides to back this guy up. And I knew because I'm a, cause I know what was going on here. I was like, this looks like a setup. And this guy decides he wants to write me up for sitting at the sleep, so-called sleeping at the library, even though I was standing up and looking down, and it's impossible for someone to sleep standing up. So he uses this accusation as the reason to end my probationary employment, because the following Friday, the head of the department comes in, and what he does is he tells me I'm terminated, and he gives me my second performance appraisal, which I was supposed to get in September, but he decide, they decide to manipulate the facts and rewrite everything to make it look like I'm some sort of lazy, incompetent person who needs to be supervised. And this was my experience dealing with City College's civil service system. And I wrote about this in an ebook because it had troubled me for many years because it just it was eating at me because I came there with the best of intentions. I came there to do the best job possible. And this is what I ran into. Now, after I lost that job, I had to go fall for unemployment. And my family member told me I could get back on the civil service list. And I got back on the civil service list. And that's where I ran into the HR brick wall. I got several letters from different schools 
all across the city. And I had traveled everywhere from Brooklyn to Queens to far, the furthest parts of the Bronx. And what I ran into was an HR brick wall erected by females and manginas. And, these H, and this HR brick wall was almost impossible to overcome because when it came down to most of the people in HR, they would use their female on-group preference as females to go out here and hire females, and the manginas would go out of their way to go out and hire more females because they believed that females were being oppressed. Now, in 2009, I thought I was not going to be able to get on the list again, so I went out and I took another exam for the CUNY office assistant, and I went to hiring pools, again, all over the city. I went over to Queens, I went to Brooklyn, I went to the farthest parts of the Bronx, and I would go to these hiring pools all over, and I would always wind up not getting considered for any sort of employment. And I ran into several of these hiring pools, and I started to notice red flags as related to the hiring practices, and they started to become really concrete with me. I had already made observations about it ever since the first hiring pool, but I started to notice that a lot of these HR people, they really weren't concerned with hiring black men, because I noticed at one hiring pool where I went all the way to Queens, I went to Queens College, I think, or it was either Queens College or Queensboro College, and they told me and two other black guys that they only had one position and it looked like it was getting filled, and they told us to go home and they put us back on the list. And that was where I noticed a red flag. And I remember going to the Graduate Center, and that was another red flag for me because there was a school I had went to go interview with New York Tech, and the HR person didn't want to tell me about the position. She had an attitude, and she just decided to just send me away without asking me any sort of questions. And I noticed, again, I started saying things about it. You know, there seems to be a discriminatory pattern as related to black men in these hiring pools. And I noticed it quite a bit as I went to these hiring pools, because I went to these hiring pools from 2009 to all the way to 2012. And I had really gotten frustrated with it, because I said, here I am, I'm spending money to go to these things and I'm not really coming out with another full-time job. I'm coming here, I'm applying for these jobs, and I'm, I'm spending money on postage to reply to these things. I'm spending money to send resumes out. I'm spending money to go on the bus, and nothing's coming through. But I was also doing other things in addition to filing for these civil going to the civil service hiring pools. I was also going to the Manhattan Educational Opportunity Center, excuse me, and I took my training in PC repair, and that's how, and that during that time, I was working on getting an A-plus certification, and I got the A-plus certification in December of 2009. I got an 834 in the 22601 and an 832 on the 22602, and that was one of the close to highest scores on that at the time. So I took time to take my get learn PC repair while I was working in the civil service system, and there was another position I was going for called the IT assistant at the CUNY system. And I applied for that position. I paid a $45 exam fee for that one because I had the A-plus certification, which was one of the qualifications for it. And I passed that exam as well. Now, after I took the IT assistant exam and I got the certification, I got a letter from one of the schools uh, regarding a position that was available. And they sent me a job description that said all you needed to do was take the 22601 at the time to um, qualify for this position. And I had already gotten the complete A-plus certification, so I was overqualified for the position. And I responded for, to that position, and I come in to the Graduate Center for this interview, and this is where it really got twisted, because this HR mangina decided instead of sticking to the job description he sent everybody, he decides he's going to rewrite the job description on the fly. So he's sitting there talking about you had to know Linux servers, you had to know PHP and SQL and all these other things that were never sent to me in the job description. And instead of going to interview me and several other people who came who weren't a part of the CUNY system or weren't CUNY employees, he decided he was going to interview 
all the CUNY employees and then tell us to go home and we would be put back on the list. And that's when something really started to stink with me as related to civil service because I started to see that civil service was not a place where people were getting jobs based on merit because it was all about the fiefdom, maintaining the fiefdom for these manginas and for these females and maintaining the nepotism, favoritism, and cronyism that allowed these people to be comfortable. It was not about hiring someone based on merit. It was not about hiring someone based on skill. And it was not about providing job security to people for, for their jobs based on merit. Now, I had another guy who had been watching many of my videos, reading my blogs. He had told me about his encounters with the CUNY civil service system, and he ran into the same situation that I had run in. However, he decided to go in a different direction. I decided to be the good Christian and walk away from the whole thing, but he decided he was going to take legal action. And I look at him and what he did, and I realized I should have taken legal action myself because there was a clear pattern of discrimination that I ran into with this civil service system as related to its hiring practices and the management practices when I got on that job at City College. And it clearly showed me that it really was not about the things that they mentioned in as related to merit, because it wasn't about merit as it related to the, me keeping the job. It was all about them maintaining their fiefdom, where they maintained the letter of their so-called rules, but never the spirit of them. And what was really sad about this job is that it was a so-called union job that was all about, supposed to be about job security, but it was all about job security for those who wanted to be a part of the fiefdom. If you wanted to be a part of the covert contracts, lies, mental manipulations, and submitting to these females and these manginas, then it was, it was a perfect system for you. And if you didn't know about those unwritten social rules, then you would just sent out. And if people just didn't like you, they made efforts to get rid of you in the way they went to get rid of me. And I look at the, my whole experience with the civil service system and I just, I really get disgusted when I think about it. Because towards the end of 2012, when I finally got fed up with the civil service system, I just finally decided to call it out. And I told the HR people that you are discriminating against black men. And what they told me was to go to somebody else. They sent me emails to somebody else. And then they went to go get their HR manginas to cover up for them and say that my claim of discrimination was unsubstantiated. Now, I could clearly see, again, the pattern going on as related towards civil service and its discrimination policies against black men because whenever black men would enter the civil service system for a CUNY office assistant position, they would have a hard time getting the jobs and they would have a hard time keeping them due to the practices that women participated in. But because women and women of color are protected classes in many cases, whenever they participate in discriminatory behavior, oftentimes you can't hold them accountable because the HR manginas will go out of their way to protect the women because they believe if they protect the women, they will get some sort of benefit from it. And this is what, this is my experience dealing with civil service, and this is why I don't bother with civil service jobs anymore, because civil service, again, is not a place where people get jobs based on merit. It is not a job place where people keep jobs on merit. It is a place now f that is controlled by females and manginas, and because it is a place controlled by females and manginas, it's a place where it's all about maintaining the fiefdom and the power of the fiefdom, and I ran into that when I wrote blogs talking about how to pass these exams. And I ran into one of these manginas who tried to use their, uh, their gaslighting to try to manipulate me into believing that 80 was not a high score on a civil service exam. Because this mangina, he decided to tell me, oh, 100 is considered a passing grade and that everything else is less than. And this was another thing that I saw with the CUNY system. They said anybody who made a 70, they did really did not respect, and they didn't really want to place anyone who made a 70 on a civil service exam. So when it comes down to these civil service jobs, there's a lot of 
you know, there's a lot of stuff going on that's related to these manginas and these females in HR, and they make trying to get these jobs a nightmare, and they make trying to keep these jobs a nightmare. Now, I want, I would have loved to have kept that job at City College. I, if I had stayed there, I'd probably be there for 10 years now, and I probably would have gotten a lot further with my SJS Direct imprint. But the only thing that has kept me going is God himself, because on the day when this mangina made this accusation, on the Sunday before I went to work, God had told me to keep going. And I didn't know what he meant when he told me to keep going. I didn't know that the following Tuesday that this mangina was going to make this accusation of me sleeping on the job because I was just halfway towards getting, towards setting a further direction towards getting on my feet because I had just bought my Dell Latitude computer and my laser printer and I was starting, you know, just to start, I was going to do Maryland through a print-on-demand company and I was just doing research on Lightning Source but God told me to keep going and I didn't know what he meant until this guy made this accusation and then I lost my job the following Friday and then I started to persevere and that's when I started to do that I started to really start getting serious about my work on the SJS Direct Imprint that's when I started doing research with Lightning Source and that's when I started taking my software from my Acrobat and my um, at the time I started doing page layouts and design and that's when I bought Photoshop elements for my computer and that's when I really started getting serious about building the SJS Direct imprint. And in the 10 years since then, I what I've been doing is been building this SJS Direct imprint as I've been trying to get full-time jobs. And it's been harder for me to get these full-time jobs because when you run into a lot of these HR people, again, a lot of them have this female on group preference. They believe females are victims. They believe females need opportunities. And when they see a black man like myself, they don't want to give us opportunities. And that's what I ran into with the civil service system because when it comes down to this system, it's primarily run by females and the mentality that they have that women are being oppressed, women need more opportunities, and if we hire a woman and a minority first, we have done, we have accomplished something, but they don't think about guys like me who have struggled and really have been trying to get back on their feet because for them, that's not something that they're concerned about. All they're concerned about are their numbers and their quotas. And because they're concerned with that, they're not really concerned with where we want, what we're needing to do with our lives or how we're needing to live. It's all about them and all about meeting their numbers and their quotas and not about people. Now, I met the qualifications for these jobs on merit, but I never could really keep them or get them due to the passive-aggressive and manipulative tactics that people used in the civil service system. And I got so fed up with the civil service system and its discriminatory practices with CUNY that I just decided not to bother with it anymore because for a system that talks about equal opportunity, it's a system that has become corrupted. And in some ways, it reminds me a lot of what's going on in Marvel Comics right now where the females have taken a system that was designed for merit and turned it into a fiefdom where it's all about what the females want and not what the company needs. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.